Hi, Andreas from Toddle here. And this is going to be another video of how we are building Toddle in Toddle. And today I'm going to be building a font picker, uh, kind of like what we have here in Google Fonts. So we're going to be using the Google Font API. And we're building this so uh, for our new upcoming uh, theme settings where you can go and change the fonts available in your project, go and pick different fonts initially from Google Fonts and later from all sorts of sources, right? So uh, today I'm just going to be building the basic font picker that sort of lists all the fonts from Google Fonts and let you select one of them. Um, after you select, just like we do in Google, uh, after you select the font, uh, we would then actually go and um, and here select what kind of font weight we want to choose. But I think that we'll probably leave to another day just to keep the video a bit short. Um, so let's get started. I'm here in Toddle and I'm going to start by creating a new brand called Fonts. Um, and I'm going to open up the editor here. And I want to create a new component. Uh, in So I'm going to open up uh, components in my site panel and I want to call this a font picker like that. And the first thing I want to do is to load my fonts from Google. Uh, so I always like working with the data first. So first set up your API calls, first fetch all your data, and then start working out the design and layout. And the benefit of that is that then by the time you're actually designing, you've got real data to work with. So you kind of know some of the limitations of, of the data, right? You know, are, are we, do we have a lot of metadata? Do we have a little, how much do we want to show, et cetera? Um, so I'm going to be using the Google Fonts API, and you can find that on on the URL here, you can also just go and search a Google Font Developer API. And the way this works is there's a single endpoint right here. Um, I'm gonna just gonna copy that. That essentially returns all the fonts. And unfortunately, there's no support for searching fonts. You can pick, like if you know the specific name of one, but there's no search functionality. Um, so what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna load all the fonts into the front end in total, and then we're gonna filter and search through that in, in total. This is sort of not ideal. We Ideally, we want to not overfetch data from the server. So I think there's like 1,800 fonts or something. And that's a lot of metadata to load. Um, ideally, we would want to search on the API level. But since that's not supported, we're going to need to do it on the, on the in, in total. Right? <coughs> so I'm going to copy this URL. And then here in my component, I'm going to go and create a new API, call it fonts. And here in my uh, URL field, I'm just going to paste this in. So we can see here, we initially get a uh, error and we get a message of API key not valid. And that kind of makes sense because right now it seems to be set to your API key, right? So first I'm just going to copy this part of the URL and create a query parameter here instead. It's a little bit easier to work with. Uh, it, it does the same whether you add it up here or, or here. It's just easier to manage here, right? Uh, so I need to get my API key. So in order to work with Google's uh, developer APIs, you generally need an API key that's used to identify what application you're building uh, with Google, right? Um, in this case, I've already created one uh, in my Google Cloud Console. Uh, and I've created one just for the web fonts uh, API, right? So this only have access to listing fonts uh, through Google uh, fonts, right? And that's also why I don't have a problem sharing it um, because it, it's just for identification. In their case, it doesn't actually really, it's not really secret. It doesn't really matter if it gets leaked. I don't really, I'm not afraid of that being something people can abuse. Generally, if you have secrets, uh, secret API keys, etc., you shouldn't have them in Toddle because anything in Toddle uh, is going to be run inside the client's browser and therefore they'll be able to see it. So if you don't want your users to be able to see an API key, etc., that should not be in Toddle, right? Um, so I'm going to copy this API key and go back to my uh, API, paste that in. And uh, we can see now it loads all our fonts uh, from Google, right? And I can see the different families here. I get them back, I think, in alphabetical order. And actually, I, I checked this, and I think there's like 1,800 or something um, APIs coming back. So there's quite a lot. Um, 
and 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 it handles it pretty well. Right? Um, right. So the next step is I want to add in a. I'm gonna add in a div. Dig div. There we go. Um, just uh, maybe let's give this. No, that'll be fine. We'll add in and add in another one, right? Uh, yeah, another div here. Um, this just lets me get some structure. So when I start working with the layouts, I have a little bit of nesting I can work with, right? Um, and then inside this one, I think we'll add a, a paragraph. And for now, we're just going to list all the fonts. So I'm going to go and repeat this div element. And I want to take all my fonts. Uh, and then data and items. And what we'll probably see is Total will probably struggle a little bit. So you can see as we're scrolling here, there's a lot of scrolling going because there's a lot of fonts, right? And actually, Total does seem to be handling it just fine. Now, you know, we're rendering quite a lot of items. But as we're adding more um, uh, sort of information and detail into this, Rendering these 1800 list items on the page at the same time is going to be uh, pushing it a bit. So we actually don't really want that. And the reason for that is like, first of all, it's not useful for the user. And we're just using up computer resource for no real reason. Like we don't, everything we're rendering down here underneath the window, uh, the browser is still going to need to deal with it. And, and there's really no reason for us to, to show that. So I'm going to go in here and then I'm going to, uh, inside my repeat, I'm just going to say take, and then we'll just, hey, let's just say uh, 30, right? And we can later add support for having like a limit and then um, adding more as we go along, right? We can add like a, when you get like a, either continuous scrolling or we can add a little button that says load more at a later point. But for now, I'm just going to limit how many we take, right? Um, so now we only have like the first 30 uh, items and that in most cases is actually going to be fine because if we want to browse more than that, we're probably going to be, uh, be searching anyway, right? Um, now inside my paragraph, I want to show what actual font I'm loading here, right? So uh, let's go and change this text value to our item and then family, right? Good. So far, so good. Um, and then I want to add inside each of these items. I want to do the same thing that uh, no, where are we? Yeah, Google Fonts are doing. Uh, if we just go back, they have this kind of nice box where inside each you can see a um, a phrase um, that's written in that font. So we want to be able to see what the font looks like, right? Uh, so the first thing I'm just going to do is add another paragraph. <coughs> And for now, this is just going to say this is a paragraph of text. I'm actually kind of fine with that. Uh, we can always figure out what it should say later. But for now, we'll keep it at this, right? Uh, and then let's just add a little bit of styling here. Uh, we'll add some gap of 16 pixels. I think this one should be a bit larger. Uh, that's all right. And then we'll add... Uh, Maybe a slight background color here. Um, yeah, and and then we'll add some gap in here. Um, yes. Um, maybe add a bit of border radius. We'll just do a little bit of. Uh, what was I hitting? Sixteen. There we are. Um, and we'll add some padding as well, right? Uh, so we're getting some boxes here, right? Um, maybe we'll add some padding inside here as well. <coughs> so now we sort of get something that a little bit more organized looks like box. But all these paragraphs saying this is a paragraph of text, of course, um, are just showing the same font. They're, they're all actually, I think, into the, uh, so our default font here, right? So by default, they're actually just all... Uh, enter and we want to show the actual font so the first step in doing that is actually like well actually the first thing we could do is we can go in and tell this paragraph to actually use the specific font family that we loaded right and um, the problem with doing that right now in total is that since that is not added in your that's not part of uh, total's default 
funds coming here with your with your theme and it's not been added to your project theme in any way um it's not going to sh <coughs> show up in this list right because we haven't loaded it anywhere so we're going to use a little bit of a hack here and this is sort of a very good example of how um while Toddle handles almost any use case you can get to there are always ed ca edge cases right there's there's always sometimes you want to do something that lies outside of what what we really can predict you're going to need um, and so it's really important to always have sort of a an escape hatch a way around uh, and the way we're going to do that here is we're actually going to use our uh, style attribute um, and so style attributes are, are available on all HTML elements it's part of the HTML spec and it's basically just that you write CSS directly in as an attribute of an element right and that CSS always has priority so in this case what we can go and say we're going to use a formula here we're going to concatenate and I'm going to say font family colon and then I'm going to use my item family and we'll just add a semicolon at the end for good measure right and and so what that does is actually say for this element go and override the font uh, family with uh, with this value now obviously this is not something you want to be doing in general in total right like normally you would want to use the style panel because um, there are some following effects like right now this doesn't seem to have any specific font set because total doesn't work through style attributes right it's a way that it lets you achieve something that normally wouldn't be possible uh, through the, the normal way of doing it right um, but it's sort of good like sometimes you need to do a little bit of a workaround because you're working within sort of the the fringes of what a platform can do right and we're very sort of adamant that it should always be possible um, to achieve what it is you need to do right um, so this is the first part but of course in this case um, that did change the font family but they are all looking the same and the reason for that is because none of these fonts are actually loaded into the browser right it doesn't know about them they're on google fonts but they haven't been loaded so we need to load these fonts into a uh, total and the way we're going to do that is actually the way google suggests here so if we go and pick one of these fonts and i'll just pick uh like not it's uh, this 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 that's the regular already and we can say download family right no that's view selected families that's the one uh yes it just got lost in google font uh <laughs> um ui bit right so here on the right we have this little extremely hidden icon that says use family right and it lets us shows us essentially how can we um how can we load these and i'm just going to look at the last one here the very final uh link element here in html actually exactly shows us what to do if we can put in this link element that has an href to the uh, font API using this family Roboto and display swap. In this case, Roboto is just the one I picked. We'll have to swap that out for each element, right? But I am just gonna go and copy this very last one. And then in total, I'm gonna insert that inside this div, right? So now I've got a link um, element down here. And uh, if we look at our href here, we just need to modify this a little bit. So I'm going to say uh, con oh. concat. Oops. Um, and I'm actually just going to say. And then we're just going to pick up until Roboto. Uh, copy the rest out. Then we're going to add a item family. So it's going to insert the name of that family. And then at after that, we want to add everything bef after Roboto, right? So what we're doing here is we're concatenating uh, all the data together to get the same URL as we copied from Google Fonts. But when we swapped out the Roboto, we sort of had hard code in the middle to whatever the family is, right? And the second we do that, we can see, oh, our UI uh, comes to life here, right? And every single paragraph here, every single uh, block now loads the font of... Um, that they actually want to display, right? So this now lets us, if we go to test mode, we can scroll through and see all the different fonts that we loaded here, right? And and see a preview of each one. And this is um, 
all functionality that really technically isn't supported in Total in the sense that we didn't design the platform for this use case, right? Generally, you load funds by adding them to your projects because 99.9 .9 times out of 10, you know what funds you're going to be using um, before you when you when you work on your project. You're not going to dynamically load them this way, right? But we can still, because Total is based on the HTML, like the web platform, we can still use all the same tools that we could do if we were coding. Um, and, and that sort of lets us get out of a bind in some of these cases where uh, we have very specific use cases, right? So um, now that I've got this uh, list loaded, um, this kind of works. And of course, the next step for me would be add be adding um, like a way to select this and then let's select variants. Um, but I think we're going to leave that a little bit out of the scope of this video. Instead, I want to add a search field where I can go through and search for um, different fonts and then so and quickly like filter through this list, right? Um, so I'm going to go and in my font picker, I'm going to add an input uh, and just drag that up to the top. Uh, the placeholder should be search fonts, right? Um, and we're just going to set that style to be 100% wide, right? So it takes up the whole space. Um, actually, maybe we should wrap that in a div uh, just so we can add a bit of padding around it. Right. Uh, we can add... There we go. Um, actually, let's add some more. That didn't quite look right. We'll just add. Um, that'll be fine. Right. Okay. So now we have our search field. Then we're going to create a new variable called uh, search. And we're going to start it out just as an empty string. Uh, so that's going to represent the value inside our search field. And therefore, we can use our bind functionality here. Uh, whenever we have an input field we can bind it to a variable uh, which means that it'll set the value to always match what is in the variable and it'll also make sure that whenever you change the value in the input like hello uh, it'll also update the value in the variable right so it sort of binds that to be always connected to whatever the input is showing um, and what we can then do is we can use the values of this variable to actually filter through uh, the fonts we are showing here. So we don't need to, we're not doing that on the API level because as I mentioned earlier, we don't have, like the API doesn't support that. So ideally we would sort of pass this into the API and say, hey, now I'm searching for, you know, um, abbz, right? But um, since that's not supported, we are going to do that all that filtering inside the browser. Um, so what I essentially want to do here is in here in that div when I'm repeating, I'm going to go and change that formula. And so before, I'm still going to take 30, but before I'm going to do that, I'm going to go and filter my list of fonts uh, using this formula called filter. Um, and the way it works, let me just go full screen here. The way that works is it's going to take an array and then it's going to take a formula. And the sub formula, the sort of, uh, the information we put in here, down here we have access to this item and that we're going to run this for every item in that list of fonts, right? So for every item, this sub formula that is down here, the second argument here to a filter, that's going to be evaluated. And if the evaluation is true or truthy, as we call it, which means any value that's not false or null, then it's going to keep that font in the list. Otherwise, it's going to get rid of it. And so on the output here, we'll get a list that's identical to essentially the first one. Like everything inside is going to be the same, except there's going to be some of them missing, right? So it's going to be a subset of it, right? And in this case, I'm going to pick the formula here we're filtering with to say the family. Then we're going to convert everything to lowercase because we don't want to be, have to like, if I just write ABC in lowercase, I want that to be include this, right? I don't want that to be filled out because the casing is wrong. So I'm going to convert that to lowercase. And then I'm going to say includes. What includes does is it takes either two arrays, 
uh, either an array and an item or two strings. It works with both. And then basically says, is this, in this case with strings, is this uh, is string number two inside uh, to be found anywhere inside string number one. And string number two is going to be search. And I'm going to add lowercase as well here, right? Because if we're doing it for the top one and you, for some reason you're typing with caps lock, we still actually want you to search. So we're basically, by, by converting both to lower, we're basically saying we're just doing case insensitive comparison here, right? Um, so the formula here now reads, let's take all the fonts, then let's filter out uh, so we only have the fonts where the items family, um, the name of the family includes our search string, right? So it doesn't really add, it doesn't matter if we type Z or B or A B E, all of that is valid and would keep that this font in, right? And if we look here at the output, um, we are typing hello. So right now we're not seeing any output because we don't have a font called hello. Uh, but let's go and try, uh, let's say A B, right? C A B. So we're getting sort of as we're typing we can see we're getting only fonts where um, where what we're typing is actually part of the um, part of the name, right? Now, um, what we're also seeing is that the ordering is still uh, alphabetical, right? Uh, so we're not actually sorting by best match, um, which means that in this case, if I'm writing ya. And let's say down here, there's what do we actually have? A font step. Uh, oh, this wasn't the greatest example, it, but let's say uh, um, essentially, we, we ideally we would sort of want to uh, sort by how early in the string or in, in a name or search string um, happens. I don't know if we can find a. Uh, yeah, so here if I'm searching, if I'm searching for no, right? Anonymous is a pretty good search result, but. Um, I would say that I don't even have a no. No, okay. If I had anything starting with no, uh, maybe maybe mo is better, right? Let's try mo. Uh, yeah. So anonymous comes up before uh, like these. Um, where did? Oh yeah. Okay. Because I'm limited at thirty. That's why I'm not seeing them right. But you get what I'm saying. Like I'm essentially saying I, the the best results aren't necessarily shown first, right? Um, so inside my repeat, I can actually change that. So uh, before I do take, I'm gonna, and again, the reason I'm doing it before, because I want the, so the ordering to have the, the 30 best results based on both my filtering and my ordering, right? Uh, so here I'm gonna do sort by, um, and then I'm gonna say the, um, the item family. And I'm again, I'm gonna do to lowercase, and then I'm gonna do index of. And what index of does is it's saying, what is the index of this substring? And here my index string is, I'm just gonna copy this one here so I can paste it, because it's gonna be the same one again, right? Uh, let's just go full screen. Um, so right here when we're sorting, we can see I'm saying, this uh, family, right? And again, lowercase to anonymous pro. What is the index? Like how, what, it, what, at what index in the string does this substring happen, right? In this case, it's saying mo, and that's because it happens over here, and that returns five. It's saying that's on place number five is when this string first happens. And what we're ba basically saying is we want the lowest index. So the earlier in the string it happens, the better, and that should be uh, higher, right? So we're sorting by how early in the string this happens, right? And let's just go and have a look here. And now we say, uh, uh, so, right, San, yeah, so now, for example, if we're searching for San Mono comes up before Alexandria, even though that's, of course, before that would have been the first result. But San here is like obviously more likely to be the result we want to we wanna pick, right? Um, nice. Uh, so obviously there's more to do with this component. Uh, it's also going to have a whole restyling before it actually eventually shows up in Toddle uh, as part of our, 
uh, theme set up. Um, but this was just, I thought it would be an interesting project to sort of uh, take a look at. And also showing how sometimes when building complex applications like Total in Total, um, occasionally you gotta you gotta sort of be a little bit creative about your solutions. In this case, it was uh, using the style attribute and and um, and the link element to actually dynamically load fonts inside of Total, right? And that's perfectly fine. Like sometimes that's just the way you need to solve the problem, so you can get your product out there and have people using it, right? So I hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit about how we are building Toddle using Toddle um, and how we are every day solving problems with the tool uh, to get our product out there, right? Um, if you haven't tried Toddle out yet, uh, go and sign up now. It's free to try. Make sure you join our Discord channel. We're always there to help you get started and it's a really good place to learn how to use Toddle. Um, if you like this video, please consider subscribing. We've got more coming. And let us know in the comments if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you very much.